today our topic is syphilis so syphilis is also asked as a long answer question in university exams so they will give you a clinical scenario in which a patient uh, will be coming to the opd with the history or with the presentation of a genital ulcer which on examination will he will reveal that the genital ulcer is painless without pain and there will also be lymphadenopathy without tenderness so there will be no tenderness there will be no pain in the genital ulcer if these two conditions will be present if these two conditions are present then our diagnosis will be simply syphilis okay so the causative agent of syphilis is treponema pallidum that we know already that the causative agent of syphilis is treponema pallidum now coming to the pathogenesis in pathogenesis we see the mode of the trans mode of transmission of this uh, treponema pallidum so treponema pallidum is uh, transmitted by sexual contact or by blood transfusion or by the transplacental transmission okay and let's see the spread of the treponema pallidum so the spread uh, in the spread of the treponema pallidum we see that the treponema pallidum penetrates through the skin skin abrasions so if there is any minor cuts in the skin the treponema pallidum and a uh, fluid containing the treponema pallidum is uh, uh, somehow get applied on that abrasion then through that small cuts on the skin the treponema pallidum penetrates to enter into the body and through those cuts the treponema pallidum enters into the lymphatics and the blood vessels and that leads to the primary syphilis we will see the stages of the syphilis infection so that is how the primary syphilis occurs or that is how the uh, this uh, uh, treponema pallidum gets entered into the body so next we see about the clinical features uh, of the syphilis in the clinical features there are several stages so we will see it in various stages the clinical features in various stages so first stage that uh, becomes evident is the primary syphilis that primary syphilis is characterized by hard sanker and inguinal lymphadenopathy so there will be painless genital ulcer which is called as the hard sanker and there will be inguinal lymphadenopathy with no tenderness so the lymphadenopathy will not be tender so these two features are the features of the primary syphilis okay and since the genital ulcer is not painless and the lymphadenopathy is also not painless there is no tenderness that's why the patients generally do not present in this case mark mark the words that the patients do not present during primary syphilis because there is no pain neither in the ulcer nor in the lymphadenopathy so this uh, um, ulcer and lymphadenopathy all heals in 4 to 6 weeks so after healing after the uh, healing in 4 to 6 weeks uh, ap uh, after healing uh, again after two to three months of healing there occurs secondary syphilis in which there occurs skin rash and condylomata lata is seen these two are the features of the these two are the features of the secondary syphilis what are those those are the skin rash and the condylomata lata which is also called as the uh, i mean condylomata uh, lata is nothing but the muco uh, mucocutaneous papules so papules like elevations are formed in the genital regions and those are called as the condylomata lata so these two are the features of the secondary syphilis after and this secondary syphilis also heals in one month okay after healing of the secondary syphilis latent syphilis occurs now that latent syphilis may develop within one year of infection okay or it may develop after one year of infection after one year of infection so if the 
latent syphilis develops after one year of infection it is called as late latent syphilis and if it develops within one year of primary infection so uh, with uh, after ha uh, occurring of the uh, after the occurrence of the primary syphilis if within one year there occurs latent syphilis it will be called as early latent syphilis but if it occurs after one year of the primary infection then it will be called as the late latent syphilis okay now uh, there must arise a question that what is latent syphilis so latent syphilis is nothing but a clinical condition so latent syphilis is a condition in which there is no clinical manifestation of the syphilis means there will be no symptoms of syphilis there will be no ulcer no lymphadenopathy no rash nothing there will be nothing but if you do the serology the serology test for syphilis will be positive okay so that is called as the latent syphilis means the uh, the treponema pallidum is hiding inside the body but it is not causing any symptoms that is simply the latent syphilis so after uh, so uh, so any one of these may occur either there may occur early latent syphilis or there may occur late latent syphilis after occurrence of any one of these two that may further proceed as so either it will persist for lifelong so this latent syphilis may persist for lifelong or this latent syphilis may develop into late syphilis we will see the late syphilis the features of the late syphilis later on so either it will develop into the late syphilis or it will be spontaneously cured by virtue of the immunity of the individual so we have three fates either it will persist for lifelong or it will go to late syphilis or it will be spontaneously cured so what happens when it goes to the stage of late syphilis so in late syphilis there occurs neurosyphilis in which we see meningitis vasculitis tabis dorsalis or there occurs cardiovascular syphilis in which there is uh, in which the aneurysm of the ascending aorta is most common so in late syphilis the cardiovascular complication that we see in late syphilis is most commonly the aneurysm of the ascending aorta okay so this is all about the clinical feature and the stages of the syphilis now coming to the uh, very important part which is generally asked in the university exams that is the lab diagnosis of the syphilis so in lab diagnosis we have to first state about the specimen collection how are we going to collect the specimen so uh, for uh, syphilis in uh, there occurs ulcer so here we collect three types of samples the three types of samples out of which the first one and the most important sample is the exudate so how do we collect the exudate see here the lien is cleaned so the ulcer which is there that will be cleaned with a gauge and then uh, and, and that gauge should be soaked in warm saline okay so with a uh, gauge which is soaked in warm saline water should be used to clean the genital ulcer and the margins of the ulcer will be eroded then the base of the lien is slightly pressed as a result of which the exudate comes out from that ulcer so as as soon as that exudate come out after pressing the base of that ulcer following the cleaning process the this uh, exudate is collected that exudate is collected so that is how we collect the exudate after the collection of exudate the next uh, specimen of choice is the tissue biopsy from the lien okay and other than that we have the serum for serology so these three specimens we collect for diagnosis of syphilis and after that uh, the first thing after the collection of the specimen is the microscopy examination 
So the microscopy examination that is performed is the dark ground microscopy DGM dark ground microscopy. So with the exudate with the collected exudate a wet mount is prepared on a clean slide and then it is examined under phase contrast microscopy. Why? Why do we go for the dark ground microscopy and not the normal microscopy? Because the treponema pallidum cannot be detected under simple light microscope. They can also be, uh, they can only be uh, seen under the phase contrast microscopy or fluorescent microscopy. So we go for, we examine the slide under uh, phase contrast microscopy. So uh, the sensitivity is 10 to the power 4 bacilli per ml. What does that mean? That means if uh, in 1 ml of the exudate, the number of bacilli is more than 10 to the power 4, then only we can detect the treponema pallidum in this wet mount preparation. If it is less than 10 to the power 3 uh, per ml, then we will not be able to identify or uh, uh, you know di uh, uh, diagnose this or find we will not be able to see the treponema pallidum into the diagram microscopy so that is the sensitivity 10 to the power 4 bacilli per ml now the next point is the so under dgm how will we identify whether it is treponema pallidum or not so for that we need to remember the normal appearance of the treponema pallidum that is it is slender and spirally coiled bacilli it is a slender and spirally coiled bacilli now if you are interested enough then you can remember the motility of the treponema pallidum as well some uh, this may be asked in mcqs as well like they will give you which is not the motility of the treponema pallidum and they will give all these three options and one extra option so this three will be the motility of the treponema pallidum and that the fourth one will be the will not be the motility of the treponema pallidum so they may give you this question in mcqs so the what are those three types of motility that we see uh, in case of the treponema pallidum so that is the flexion extension type of movement the cork screw motility and bending at right angle at the midpoint these are the three modality that we see in the treponema pallidum next is the direct fluorescent antibody staining for treponema pallidum dfa tp so here also a smear is made from the exudate and then it is stained with fluorescent tagged antibody against the treponema pallidum so the antibodies are taken uh, which are against the treponema pallidum and those antibodies are tagged with the fluorescent dye and that uh, fluorescent tagged antibodies are used to stain the smear which is made from the exudate okay and thus we do the direct fluorescent antibody stain for treponema pallidum the sensitivity of this process is 100% and here also we see uh, the appearance of the treponema pallidum is apple green fluorescent and spirally coiled bacilli okay so the appearance of the bacilli is apple green fluorescent spirally coiled bacilli other than that we can do the silver impregnation staining in which and uh, okay so uh, we know that the treponema pallidum is a very thin bacteria so the ordinary stains like jaden stain and the uh, jimsa stain and the grams stain these stains will not be able to stain that bacteria because it has very uh, thin um, structure it is very thin okay so that's why we have uh, in if you were impregnation staining what we do we add some silver nitrate and the treponema has the ability to
convert the silver nitrate to elemental silver to elemental state so that in uh, silver that is uh, in the elemental state that gets deposited on the surface of treponema as a result it becomes thick and act as it becomes thick then we can stain the treponema pallidum okay then we can stain the treponema pallidum so what are the stains that we do then after silver uh, impregnation on the surface of the treponema pallidum so we can do the levadity stain or the fontana stain remember if it is a lien biopsy that means if it is a tissue biopsy then we will go for the levadity stain see here how can we remember levadity starts with l and lien biopsy starts with l so we can so we can uh, remember that levadity stain is for the lien biopsies while fontana stain is for those smears which are made from the exudates directly so after the silver impregnation we can uh, stain them with various stains like liberty or fontana depending on the types type of smear okay or uh, mm, yes so now next is the culture so it is no, uh, not culturable okay the culture of treponema pallidum is not possible on the artificial media that's why in this violates the coach postulates the coach uh, postulates which describe that uh, any organism can be described as uh, as a, a patho uh, pathogenic or the cause of any disease only if we can reproduce it outside okay in artificial media but this treponema pallidum cannot uh, multiply outside into the artificial medium that's why it violates the coach postulates but they can be maintained in the rabbit testes of nicole's strain this strain should must be remembered so they can be maintained in the rabbit testes of nicole's strain this may be asked in mcqs so nicole's strain uh, of rabbit can be used for culturing on the treponema pallidum the next and the most important comes is the serology so in serology we do the antibody detection so as the end uh, treponema pallidum is within the body so there must have been some antibody product and, and our aim is to detect those antibodies so the serology can be of two types which is non-treponemal tests and point and the number two is the treponemal test so a is non-treponemal test and b is treponemal tests non-treponemal or it is also called as the non-specific and b the is called as treponemal or specific test so non-treponemal or non-specific tests uh, let me see out of which the most important one is the vdrl test what is the full form of VDRL? So the full form of VDRL is Venereal Disease Research Laboratory Test. It it was done in VDRL laboratory for the first time. That's why it was uh, given the name of the. Uh, that's why the name of the test uh, was uh, put uh, was given based on that uh, laboratory. That is Venereal Disease Research Laboratory, in which we detect reagent antibody in the patient serum using the cardiolipin antigen from the bovine heart that means the reagent antibody is homologous to the cardiolipin antigen okay i mean the reagent antigen is which is uh, belonging to the treponema pallidum that is homologous with the cardiolipin antigen from the bovine heart which is present in the bovine heart so by using that cardiolipin antigen we detect this reagent antibodies in the uh, patient's serum reagent antibodies are those anti antibodies which are pro uh, produced against the treponema pallidum within the body so those reagent antibodies are detected by the cardiolipin antigen which has been obtained from the bovine heart what is the principle 
the principle of vd rl test is is a slight flocculation test and it is based on the antigen antibody reaction and immune complex formation and in the immune complex formation so this is the principle of the vd rl test so in this test the slide used is a 12 ringed concave vd rl slide so the slide is like this two three four three and uh, three uh, similarly there will be four rows so that it becomes total so that uh, it total becomes 12 so 12 concave ring. these are all the these are all the concave rings okay these are all concave ring so uh, in this way there are 12 ringed uh, concave vdrl slides these are called as the 12 rings so 12 ring concave vdrl slide is used for this test the patient serum in this case is first heated at 56 degree centigrade for 30 minute why is this necessary this is necessary to inactivate the non specific inhibitors in the patient serum so there are some inhibitors um, the name uh, given to them is non specific inhibitor simply so these non specific inhibitors which are not specific to uh, those uh, you know uh, toponema pallidum those uh, inhibitors inhibit the reaction of the antigen cardiolipin antigen and the antibody that's why we have to first inactivate those non specific inhibitors for that we heat the patient serum at 56 degree centigrade for 30 minutes for 30 minutes now the vdrl test can be done in two ways either it can be uh, it can be done in uh, in a qualitative fashion or it can be done in semi quantitative fashion as well so in qualitative test in qualitative test the test procedure is that we use 50 microliter of the preheated patient serum and we mix it with one drop of the vdrl antigen which is nothing but the cardiolipin antigen and then the slide is rotated for 4 minutes so a uh, 50 microliter of the preheated patient serum is mixed with one drop of vdrl antigen and is rotated for 4 minutes after that we have the results that we get the results uh, in results we have some negative tests and the positive test so we will uh, if there is no clumping in those concave uh, rings on the vdrl slide that means it is a negative test if there is clumping seen in the slides then it is a positive test okay so uh, so that is all about the qualitative uh, method now coming to the quantitative test so in quantitative test we can uh, do a semi quantitative assessment like how much is the quantity of that bacilli so patient serum is in this case diluted serially in a ratio of 1 is to 2 1 is to 4 1 is to 8 and like that so in this ratio it is diluted and rough estimation of the quantity of the can be made so uh, if the titer comes out to be comes out to be more than 1 is to 8 so if uh, after 1 is to 8 the Uh, I mean, if the reaction is seen, okay, at a titer of one is to eight, then we will be calling it as a true positive test. We will be calling it as a true positive test. Now, VDRL can also be done in case of CSF, like we have seen that in late syphilis, the Uh, uh meningitis may also occur so in that case also the csf can be used for diagnosis of vdr many i mean syphilitic meningitis so in that case the vdrl can also be used to detect the antibody in the csf what are the uses so of the vdrl the uses are is are that uh, it is used for screening the samples if the sample load is very high okay so if the sample load is very high then we can use this vdrl test for screening of a large load of samples uh, if we are doing in a community basis then uh, we have to first screen the various samples so for that we can use this vdrl test and 
of course we have uh, seen that csf can also be examined with the vdrl test so it can also detect the neurosyphilis but the advantages the advantages are that it can be used to monitor the response to treatment it can be used to detect neurosyphilis and the sensitivity of the vdrl in secondary syphilis is 100 percent and mostly the patients will be presenting in the secondary syphilis so the sensitivity is very important of the vd uh, i mean the sensitivity of vdrl is 100 percent that is a very important point for us now what are the disadvantages of that vdrl test the disadvantages of the vdrl test are two number one is the biological false positive results biological false positive results that means if the titer comes out to be less than 1 is to 8 we have seen that if the titer is more than 1 by 8 then we can see it as uh, we uh, report the uh, sample as positive for syphilis but if it is less than 1 by 8 then it will be a biologically false positive result that may be seen in two conditions either in acute Condis, uh, which are divided into acute conditions and the chronic conditions. So acute conditions are the relapsing fever, pregnancy, allergy, malaria, infectious mononucleosis. That means that the test may come out to be positive in this in this type of acute conditions. Okay. Similarly, in IV drug abusers, viral hepatitis. HIV lepromatous leprosy in this chronic conditions also this VDRL test may come out to be positive that's why VDRL is not specific for syphilis this is this question is asked very commonly very very commonly that why VDRL is not a specific test for syphilis so in that question you have to refer to these two uh, um, parts uh, these two conditions like there are some acute conditions in which this VDRL test comes out to be positive and there are some chronic conditions also in which uh, this VDRL test comes out to be positive that's why VDRL is not specific but so yeah it na can those questions that will fetch you better marks uh, good marks if you give some examples also from the acute and the chronic conditions now coming to the uh, second disadvantage the second disadvantage is progen phenomenon so progen phenomenon we have seen in the immunology that there occurs some progen phenomenon and some postgen phenomenon so progen phenomenon there occurs when there is excess antibody so when there is excess antibody we see progen phenomenon when there is excess antibody we add vdrl antigen then no clumping will be seen the clumping will be masked by excess of antibody and we will consider the test to be negative but it is not the case it comes out to be negative that means the clumping is not seen just because there was excess antibody but that doesn't mean that uh, the test is negative we have got this false negative okay so these two are the disadvantages of the syphilis uh, i mean disadvantages of the vdrl tests okay so this is all about the vdrl remember this vdrl is a very important short note it's a very important short note very commonly it is very commonly asked in the examinations as short note so remember to write all this so remember to write all these points principal slides qualitative test procedure the results of the qualitative quantitative test what is the uh, true positive in quantitative test uh, the what is, what is the true positive in quantitative test then uh, the uses of the uh, vdrl the uh, advantages of the vdrl the disadvantages of the vdrl remember to put all these points in the answer that will be better for you this is all about the VDRL. There's some other non-specific tests or the non-treponymal uh, uh, tests uh, that can be done or are generally done are the RPR test, which is the rapid plasma reagent test. 
द यू एस आर टेस्ट विच इज अनहीटेड सीरम रिएज टेस्ट एंड ट्रस्ट टेस्ट विच इज द टॉल्यूटिन रेड अनहीटेड सीरम टेस्ट तो दीज आर ऑल्सो सम ऑफ द नॉन स्पेसिफिक और नॉन ट्रिपोनिमल टेस्ट दैट कैन बी परफॉर्म्ड अदर देन दैट वी हैव द ट्रिपोनिमल टेस्ट द ट्रिपोनिमल टेस्ट दैट कैन बी डन आर द टी पी आई द ट्रिपोनिमा पैरिडम इमोबिलाइजेशन टेस्ट जस्ट रिमेंबर द नेम्स ऑफ दिस टेस्ट यू नीड नॉट टू गो इन डिटेल्स ऑफ दिस टेस्ट जस्ट इनमेटिंग दिस टेस्ट विल बी ओके फॉर अंडर ग्रेजुएट लेवल सो द ट्रिपोनिमल टेस्ट आर द टी पी आई द ट्रिपोनिमा पैरिडम इमोबिलाइजेशन टेस्ट एफ टी ए ए बी एस द फ्लोरोसेंट ट्रिपोनिमल एंटीबॉडी एप्स ऑप्शन टेस्ट and remember this fta abs is the gold standard test for the specific diagnosis of syphilis so till now whatever we have read these are not the specific tests for diagnosis of syphilis rather this fta abs is the only specific test for the diagnosis of uh, syphilis so the answer if a question is asked like what is the gold standard test for diagnosis of syphilis you have to say it is FTA ABS that is fluorescent treponemal antibody absorption test. Okay, now coming to the next uh, treponemal test are the TPH treponema pallidum hemagglutination assay, TPPA that is treponema pallidum particle agglutination test, enzyme immunoassay and western blot. So these are all the treponemal tests that we can do for diagnosis of. syphilis out of which the fta abs is the gold standard for the diagnosis of syphilis okay so we have completed our topic of syphilis in which we have read about the causative agent the pathogenesis clinical features stages of syphilis the lab diagnosis and the vdrl which is the most important part in that lab diagnosis and the serology vdrl is and the treponemal test as well so this is this completes our topic syphilis